Welcome to Moves That Matter. I'm your host, Dr. Clyde Posley Jr., and I'm excited to have you back this week uh, for part two of our conversation about uh, mother and, ch and, and children, infant mortality rates and death rates relative to the mother's pregnancy and the life of the child in the African-American culture. And uh, while we are focused on specifically the African-American culture, we don't want to see the mortality rate rise at all relative to this important subject. So we're going to be talking about that in uh, part two of last week's show. Uh, I brought my guests back and we're going to make sure that we have a thorough conversation about it. I want to remind you of just a couple of things, and then we're going to get into this conversation. Uh, my book, More Than Icons and Images, Uncovering the Hidden Protest Narrative of the African-American uh, Black Athlete in the 21st Century. That book discusses uh, political voice and how through mediums and platforms uh, uh, athletes have used uh, over the years. They've used these platforms to make sure that they were heard. And we, we've seen in the recent election that being heard, using your platform, and, and even voting makes a difference. And so uh, that's uh, More Than Icons and Images is the name of that book. But also I've been also promoting another book that's really important. It's written by uh, uh, Dr. Brian Hudson, and it is uh, Biblical and Social Justice. What is it? Powerful book. It belongs on the bestseller list. I want I want to promote that book. I want to make sure uh, that as this book pops up on the screen and you and where you can order it pops up, as you should be able to see it now. I want you to make sure that you get this book. I am recommending this book. Go out and buy it. It is worth your money. It won't it won't be one that just sits and collects dust on the shelf. Listen, uh, relative to the uh, transition uh, from President elect from President Trump to President elect. Don't be worried. President-elect Joe Biden is going to be installed as the president uh, at January 20th. Don't fall prey to the fear and the tactics that Donald Trump is using, trying to purge uh, documents, trying to shred documents to cover up his activity as president. Don't be concerned with that. You have already voted. He is moving. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is the opportunity for a change in the future. Listen, so I want to get into my um, my important uh, uh, segment with my guest, uh, Pastor Richard Reynolds uh, from the New Revelation Christian Church. We, he's back with us today, and we are excited to have him. I want to give him an opportunity to introduce himself again to us for those who may not have watched the show last week. He's going to do that, tell us a little bit about himself, and he is going to get us into our subject again today. Pastor Reynolds. Thank you, Dr. Posley, again, for being so gracious and extending the Glad opportunity We're honored. for me to come and share uh, in this platform mm -hmm. uh, moves that matter is an important voice, uh, not just in our local community, but in the global community, highlighting issues mm -hmm. of disparity that exist in our community. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to be here today to talk about uh, one of the many social injustices mm -hmm. uh, that our community faces. Uh, and, and right now, uh, this particular subject is near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. uh, the subject of mother and infant mortality mm -hmm. among African-American women, uh, the disparities that right. exist are really disgusting mm -hmm. and, and not acceptable. Right. And so I thank you for allowing me to share with you mm -hmm. Uh, on this particular platform. I was supposed to introduce myself. I'm Richard Reynolds. Well, you are. And I pastor <laughs> uh, the New Revelation Christian Church mm -hmm. here in the city of Indianapolis. Where's that located? And, and we're located on the northeast side mm -hmm. in, in Lawrence mm -hmm. uh, at 6701 Oakland and Road. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, we're not worshiping in person right now, uh, but you're more than welcome to connect with us. Uh, through our virtual worship experience uh, on my Facebook web, page. Web, yeah, what is the website? How uh, can they get to your uh, uh, You can get to our worship experience mm -hmm. on my Facebook page, Richard A. Reynolds. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you into our worship experience one Sunday soon. Mm -hmm. So last week, you know, we, we, we kind of ended talking about the profound, uh, the profundity of this issue relative to uh, racism mm -hmm. and and the in inherency, the, the, just the clear origins of it producing what we're having today. Right. 
Talk a little bit more about uh, this, uh, this, the death rate of, of pregnant African-American mothers, the death rate of the children uh, from a historical perspective and how its unfortunate relationship with race came to be. Well, again, there is a huge disparity. Uh, African-American women and infants have a higher rate of mortality than any other ethnicity in our country. Wow. Um, three to four times as many African-American women and children die in the course of childbirth than white women in our country. And these numbers are huge. Uh, again, as you zoom out, you know, and, and take into account all of the people who die on an annual basis, mm -hmm. Uh, again, due to circumstances that are completely preventable. Yes, sir. You know, that's the thing that's got to be emphasized that's here. That's right. Uh, because of implicit and explicit bias at the hands of healthcare professionals who we are trusting with our care, the care of our women in their most vulnerable time, mm -hmm. uh, because women come so close to death when giving birth. That's right. It's, it's an incredibly vulnerable time in their lives, and we're dependent upon medical professionals to value their lives and to pay attention to the cues and the symptoms that they have that can be fatal if not properly treated. And so, again, we started off this conversation talking about uh, my dear member, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Shanice Wallace, mm -hmm. who died after giving birth at 30 years of age, the chief resident uh, in her hospital, uh, by circumstances that were completely preventable. Are you able to go into that and explain what you mean by that? Well, uh, in general, yeah, in she general. was she was suffering, um, and and I, I know African American women are familiar with this terminology, and and we as men have to do better. And I know we want to talk some about solutions sure. today, mm -hmm. and this kind of leads into some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but she she dealt with uh, a, a symptom called preeclampsia, mm -hmm. and and fundamentally preeclampsia is when a woman's blood pressure goes high. Mm -hmm. Relative to the pregnancy. Some, right. Mm -hmm. And and there's some other symptoms that go along with it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's completely preventable. Uh, one of the things that's done when a woman has uh, obvious preeclampsia symptoms is they, they go right in and perform an emergency C-section and yes. take the baby yes. to relieve the mother of the stress that her body is going through because and the of the preeclampsia symptoms. death. Right. Both her and the baby. Right, yeah. exactly. And so this is a condition that's widely known. The symptoms are widely known. Mm -hmm. But when medical professionals don't pay attention to those symptoms, when medical professionals, and we touched on this earlier, have been impacted by implicit and explicit biases that have taught going back into slavery that African-American women have a higher pain tolerance mm -hmm. and so therefore they don't pay attention to the symptoms. They don't take everything as seriously as they need to take it. They don't take the steps. They don't follow the protocols that are already in place. Or may not have the health care to pay for the procedures that the doctors may otherwise want to do. That's possible too. It's possible. That's they possible come in too. with no insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, if a doctor has implicit bias within he uh, himself or herself, they may not be as 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 reticent to uh, per, uh, suggest certain tests right. that they may not be able to be paid uh, uh, for. And that's a very real piece of of all racial mm -hmm. injustice. You know, poverty plays a huge absolutely. role. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and and the condition you just described is the result of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, not that's with, what not makes. With, right. Uh, this situation with Dr. Sinise so significant because that was is not that an probably issue. has nothing to do it, with not it. at all lack of knowledge and information right. has nothing to do with it. It is purely race mm -hmm. that led to her receiving inadequate care, My and God. so whether it's poverty uh, or not, uh, this is not acceptable. That's right. Uh, and so we see that's, that that's it's the not point we're social economics. That's right. Right. That that brought this about. And again, that doesn't justify. Right. Because 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 our health should not be a social economic issue. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. But this makes it clear that this is a racial issue mm -hmm. because she had the knowledge, she had the information, and and so you know part of the solution that I think, and again just drawing from the wisdom of Dr. Shanice, she talked about it. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Just like you and I are having That's this right. conversation right now over dinner, over holiday dinners, over events with right. family and friends. That's right. She would be sure to share this information with other people just so they would know about it. And so you started off, you know, talking about platforms Mm -hmm. and and moves that matter is a wonderful platform. But as you were saying that, I realized that each and every one of our audience members needs to recognize that you, too, have a platform. That's right. Anytime you have an opportunity to have a conversation with anybody about anything, you're utilizing your platform. Whether it's a one-on-one platform or you're taking advantage of social media. I was just reading something about that the other day. Now I'm feeling preachy, Doc. (laughs) (laughs) But I was reading something about that the other day. Uh, about the reality that that today everybody has a platform. That's right. That's because right. of social media. Social media has given everyone a platform. Everybody yes. has yes, a sir. platform. And, this, and the cell phone. Yes, has right. an opportunity to use their voice. That's right. I normally start out talking about scripture, but one I will I'll reference right now that really supports, you know, this conversation around social justice is Proverbs 31, 8, 9. Mm-hmm. I particularly like Uh, the New Living Translation, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless and see that they get justice. And so we all have a platform. We can speak up for anybody and everybody Mm -hmm. through the responsible use of our social media platforms. We can all cry out and cry loud for those That's who right. are being crushed. That's and right. I want to encourage you to do so. And so Dr. Shanice would just talk about it. Mm-hmm. She would talk about the disparities. And so it's got to be part of our conversation. That's one of the things we can do is talk about it. The other thing that we have to do as a part of talking about it is providing information mm-hmm. for husbands and fathers uh, and, and mothers and grandmothers, anybody who is going to accompany our women into the delivery room, anybody who's going to be in that sacred space mm-hmm. when somebody is giving birth needs to be informed. Right. And so it's a shame now, that even we in have the to prenatal take these care. measures. Even in the pre- if you can do it early yeah, in, in the, the prenatal, prenatal care, care. ask yeah, questions. Yeah, this is, this is another conversation, yeah. right? We, we talk about the conversation we have to have with our children, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, when they inevitably come in contact with Law the police. Law right. Uh, but this has to be another conversation. Right. Because, again, if it's not the police, it can be your physician. Right. And, th- th- and this is really near and dear to both of us. Uh, you want to tell them why? You want me to tell Man, them? Man, just like you said at the yeah. end of, of our show last mm-hmm. week, um, your oldest daughter is mm-hmm. pregnant with mm-hmm. your second grandchild. Yes, sir. My oldest child, my daughter, my only daughter, uh, is pregnant with my first grandchild. Right. So this is a mandate for you and I. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it, it causes us to look at pregnancy and giving birth through a different lens. Uh, and, and we have to do anything that we can, again, to make sure that not only uh, Dr. Shanice Wallace, again, say her name so that her death is not in vain. We have to make sure that her death is not in vain, but also the death of so many other uh, African-American women who have gone nameless. Mm-hmm. You know, I reached back into history and talked about Dr. Sims mm-hmm. and his unethical practice of human experimentation on enslaved African American against women, their will. Uh, and we said their name. That's right, against against their will. But but I want to say the name of three mm-hmm. who were named, who he performed surgeries on. One of these women, he did thirty surgeries on. Wow. Anarka. Wow. Anarka. Somebody say her name. Thirty wow. surgeries were performed on this one woman. Without the aid of anesthesia. Without the aid of anesthesia. Without the aid of uh, um, sanitation and uh, uh, sanitizing equipment uh, uh, that we would have today. Without the lighting, with filthy instruments, and without others who had any knowledge of what he was doing because he was supposed to be a forerunner in all of this. Well, actually, others did have knowledge. Uh, Others like who? Of what he was doing. Others in the profession. Mm. He was operating on some levels um, my, my. With, with the endorsement of the medical community. At that time, right. In the educational community in medicine. And so, you know, Anarka, Betsy, and, and Lucy, mm. I want to say their names. Right. They, they've been long gone off the scene, uh, but they were sacrificial lambs. 
And I, I want to say their name. Matter of fact, you maybe want to read one of the statements that I ran across. Okay. Um, uh, it, it was an advertisement uh, that was used uh, to to attract people to this particular school. It says right here, again, this is in the Antebellum South. Uh, again, this is the South Carolina Medical College. So there were people who were very aware mm -hmm. of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And this was their advertisement, okay? No place in the United States offers as great an opportunity for acquisition of anatomical knowledge, subjects being obtained from among the colored population in sufficient numbers for every purpose and proper dissection carried out without offending any individual in the community. Mm -hmm. That's the advertisement. Again, because we were viewed as chattel, we were viewed as property, right. we were three-fifths human. And we're not. Exactly. Right? We, we had become, again, dehumanized in order to make this happen. Right? They went on to say that they felt like these women uh, were, were doing it willingly. Mm -hmm. And that they had no better option. We've learned that those to be a just re, uh, 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 repeating of lies from right. Indiana Lats to uh, oh, we know that that was against their will. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So you know, it was known, mm -hmm. known by the medical community. Mm -hmm. And again, as I stated on the last segment, um, this man is still celebrated. Doctor Sims is still celebrated as the father of modern gyne gynecology. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that's a problem. So, so Pastor, we, we, we're we're making some bold claims which are substantiated, mm -hmm. and 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 but I want to be pointed in in these claims. We are saying that there are physicians that who, despite their training, and despite their um, work in an important supposed non political field, have racist implicit bias, have racist uh, tendencies. And that our people need to pay attention and ask the right questions. That's right. So, so as to learn if this should be my physician, mm -hmm. is my because Man. the child's only protection is the mother's questions and care. Lord have mercy. You, you just reminded me, uh, Doctor, of of a, an interview I heard on the radio a few few months ago uh, that revealed that. African American infants that have to go into uh, NICU, mm -hmm. you know, ICU care, neonatal ICU care for, for infants who are born prematurely. There are statistics that show that our babies have a higher survival rate when their doctors and nurses are African American. My, my. I mean, I, I wanted to cry when I heard that. So it, say that again. It, it messes me so up right to the now. Camera and say that again. You know, this this is the level of disparity that exists. That this this blew me away to learn that African American babies have a higher survival rate under medical care when their medical professionals, their nurses and their doctors, are African Americans. When their nurses and doctors My are God. white or from other ethnicities, the survival rate is lower and the mortality rate is higher. And so, again, we're talking about our women in their so, most vulnerable place. So, we're talking about our babies Exactly. So this is why we say place. that it's undeniable that race and implicit bias plays a role in this. That's right. So, we're, so we're not just up here two pastors you know, pontificating with our, our, our views. We're using analytics right. to prove that there is a different outcome Absolutely. for African-American women and babies. Uh, uh, when implicit bias and race comes into the, the equation. And if I, I want to read a couple statements sure, I have will, please here do. on racism. And, and as a way of introducing those, I'm reminded of something that I heard Jawanza Kanjufu say mm -hmm. back in the 90s when he came and spoke at my home church in Louisville, Kentucky. He said, until we understand white supremacy, everything else will be confusing. Absolutely. And so we look at our communities. We look at all of the problems that exist. We look at the poverty. We look at the oppression. We look at the incarceration rates and all of those kinds of things. Until we have a clear understanding of the way white supremacy works, all of those things will be confusing. And we will just have the question, why, 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 when the answer is, is white supremacy. Exactly. Because so they look through that lens. 
-hmm. racist, racist, uh, racist supremacists look through, look through that lens at how they view us. Right. So in order for us to at least have a proper purview, we have to stop denying its presence. Right. And accept the fact that it is here. Racism and is we real. Have, it is real and it's a part of every component of the human experience. Absolutely. On African American soil. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me let me read a couple of these sure. statements. Uh, structural racism is defined as a system where public policies, institutional practices, and cultural representations work to reinforce and perpetuate racial inequity. It is fueled by predominantly white power structures that perpetuate power imbalances among people of color. Policy solutions to maternal and infant mortality crisis must be grounded in social justice frameworks that are intentionally designed to address these power imbalances. All right. Here's another statement again that talks about white supremacy and, and the reality of it, uh, of systemic injustice. Uh, again, the American Academy for Family Physicians recognizes that racism is a system that categorizes people based on race, color, ethnicity, and culture to differentially allocate societal goods and resources in a way that unfairly disadvantages some while without merit rewards others. As a system, racism has been institutionalized in a way that, per that permits the establishment of patterns, procedures, practices, and policies within organizations that consistently penalize and exploit people because of their race, color, culture, and ethnic origin. This system of racism affects the attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors of one individual towards another, as well as how individuals perceive themselves in a society. Absolutely. And so it's real. It's real. And we need to be able to begin to understand, you know, how vastly we're all impacted by systemic racism. And it is an issue and a conversation that we've got to have around our women That's preparing right. to bring the most precious resource available into being. That's right. Giving birth to our babies. That's right. Pastor, I want to ask you to do something. I want you to close out the show today by looking into the camera and telling the viewer what you want them to know about what you think their responsibilities are in light of our show and what you what you think needs to happen to get the ball rolling in the right direction. In light of what is happening, I'll just reiterate some of the themes that we, we shared today. Uh, number one, I want to encourage you to use your platform. Uh, use your voice to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, whether that is your social media platform or just the conversation that you have over the dinner table. We have to talk about it. We have to shine light in this dark place. Again, a lot of attention has already been given to police brutality, but we've got to give more attention to social injustice that happens because of implicit and explicit bias at the hands of physicians. Again, across our medical care, not just as it relates to mother and infant mortality, that's what we're talking about today, but these racial disparities exist across the spectrum of our medical care and needs. So talk about it, talk about it. Don't be ashamed to talk about it. Say her name, Dr. Shanice Wallace, so that her death will not be in vain. We need to say her name so that we can, we can Make sure that her death is not in vain. This is, this is one way that we can make it make sense. It's not going to bring her back. But if we can prevent other deaths moving forward because we have this conversation and our husbands and fathers uh, and, and mothers and sisters, anybody who accompanies our women into the delivery room are informed on how to advocate uh, for their loved ones, then we would have made sure that her death is not in vain. And in a small way, we can make it make sense. Her life for the preservation of other lives. That's right. Thank you. God bless you, man. I appreciate you. Well done. Well bless done. You. Bless you. Listen, thank you all for uh, participating uh, in such a pointed and important show. Uh, we recognize the sensitivity of this show. 
And I know that some of you are probably feeling emotional, even maybe to the point of tears. We hope that moves us uh, to action. I want my grandchild uh, and my, my daughter to be safe. I want other African-American women and, and women of color or not uh, to be safe. And by all means, I want the, uh, the glory of God to be seen in how we treat each other, from the physician uh, to, the, to the pregnant mother and how we treat, as Pastor said, our most precious commodity, life, which gives us opportunity to be better. This has been moves that matter, and you know, I always say to you, in life you're constantly making moves. Since you have to make moves, why don't you choose to make your moves, moves that matter? God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.